Hello and welcome to the video. This is the last video in kind of a mini trilogy. There was one video where uh, Ben from 3DXR and I installed a LiDAR into an RD pilot model. That's very useful for just accurately measuring the height as you're coming into landing. And then there was another video, links to all this stuff down below, where Ben from 3DXR did a great job of explaining how to set up basic automated landing. This is the final video in that trilogy is more about the extra things that you can do if you do have a LiDAR fitted to your model because what it can do is as it accurately measures the height as it's coming into land it can do something called flaring where it can actually lift the nose of the model up reduce the power and fall beautifully into the grass now this is particularly good if you have a model with wheels if you have a belly lander it just makes it far more controlled so i'm doing quite a bit with lidars at the moment i need to say a massive thank you to ben from 3dxr for putting aside this time and supporting these videos to help share his massive knowledge about rd pilot and how these things work but with that any more ado let me hand over to ben and he can show you how this stuff works okay so we are um gonna have a little look at our our autonomous landing uh, with and without a LiDAR. So what we've got here is we have um, connected to the HeWing T2 that we've been setting up and we used on a video with the HeLink. Um, and we're going to, well, it's going to get its maiden today <laughs> and we'll see how well it flies. So <clears throat> this one, we've got RD Pilot flight controller in, in this case it's a Cube Orange. Um, we've got an airspeed sensor, we've got a HeLink, we've got the camera. Um, everything else is stock from the PNP kit. So we have done the initial setup. We have configured the servos correctly to the right outputs. Um, and I'm just gonna show you a couple of the basic settings I've done before its first flight. So let's have a little look here on our setup. Um, and we'll have a look through the parameters. We've got airspeed. So I've made sure our airspeed is on. Um, the parameters are correct, it's a can airspeed. Um, and I've also took a guess at some of the sort of potential cruise speeds for this aircraft. So I think we took a little guess at 14 meters a second. And for the maiden flight, so what you're going to see here, we're going to do a mission where we will fly some circles and calibrate the airspeed. And um, once we're happy with that value, we can sort of turn off the calibration. So in order to calibrate an airspeed sensor, as you can see here, I've gone to the search page in the full parameters list. Um, I've typed in ARS or start to sort of spell out airspeed and then um, we've got this parameter here airspeed auto cal the default will be off so I've turned it on and how this works is once the aircraft's in the air and circling around it's going to update this airspeed ratio which is sort of slightly different between each sensor and also different between each model um, so this airspeed's a can one so we've sort of set some of these airspeed parameters sort of airspeed type airspeed use so I'm happy that's set up and running. Um, we've got a compass on here, so I'm happy that that's connected and in the right order. We will need to do a compass calibration in the field. A couple of other parameters I've done. I did adjust the bank angle. It's a sort of smaller aircraft to what we normally use. So I um, adjusted some of the angle max parameters, also the pitch. So I give it a bank angle max of 50 degrees instead of 45. Um, I give it a little bit more sort of pitch authority and then I also put the settings in for the LiDAR. So let's have a look at that um, LiDAR or rangefinder. So what I've done is I've enabled rangefinder one. Now some of these parameters are um, sort of an enabling parameter, which means once you turn this one on, there's another subset of parameters that are only active. So you've got to either refresh your parameter list in order to see the settings for the rangefinder or do a reboot and reconnect. So I enabled the rangefinder I have to tell it um, the type of rangefinder in this case. So it's a TF Mini. It's running on I2C. And then I set a sort of minimum and a maximum distance. So this one can be down to 10 centimeters. Um, and also I've put this one up to 10 meters for outdoor use. I believe they quote it can do potentially 12 meters outdoors. The orientation is facing down. And there's another parameter in order to use a rangefinder for landing which is what we want to do, which is here, rangefinder lander, landing. Um, I've enabled that. So if you have a rangefinder, but you don't set this parameter, it will not use the rangefinder um, in landing. So let's also have a look at the land parameters. So one I did reduce because we have a rangefinder now fitted is the land flare altitude. 
So that's the altitude above the ground where it's going to flare. So by default, it's three meters, and that would be a sort of absolute guess in a normal flight without a rangefinder. We can potentially take this 1.5 meters down um, to even lower, maybe a meter, and that's the height at which it's going to start to flare. Um, so it, you know, it wants to be as close to the ground as possible. Um, but like I say, if you're not using a rangefinder and using a barometer, you can suffer uh, the barrow drift. Obviously, the um, it depends how good the information about the level of the field is, what your takeoff height was. There's there's so many variables. So this um, low cost lidar um, greatly improves the sort of accuracy of a automatic landing. But there is many other things that you can do to um, improve on that accuracy. But let's just have a little look at um, what difference the lidar makes. In that sense, that is the sort of parameters I am going to do. Um, the next step, um, this is the sort of genuine maiden flight for me. So because we're running RD Pilot and we have airspeed sensors to calibrate and we want to see how it behaves and we want a little bit of sort of safety when we do this flight. So we'll program in a mission with some circling and then also a landing pattern in case we have some sort of fail safe issues. So what I would normally do is add, let's do a shake to take off. Um, let's get it in the air, let's get it circling to calibrate the airspeed sensor and then let's take over it fly it around and see what its tuning looks like um, we could also perform a fixed wing auto tune but let's have a look at what's needed to um, set these mission items so uh, we've got a home point of here now on a fixed wing we can do a, a takeoff parameter so let's just take off it's going to ask us an altitude I'm going to do 50 meters and it'll ask us a pitch let's just keep this at 15 degrees so what's going to happen there is we're going to um, throw this for takeoff. It'll climb to 50 meters at a pitch of 15 degrees, and then I'll head to the next waypoint. So here's a flying field we're going to use today. So let's imagine we're going to throw it um, to the west in this case. So it's going to end up over here, and then let's maybe um, give it somewhere to go. We'll reduce our height. Well, this is a small aircraft. We don't need to be too high. And we'll sort of bring it back towards us. So let's have a little look at that and then um, let's keep the heights at about 60 meters so it would take off flight away point two turn to three turn to four and then let's also get it circling in front of us so i'll drop a waypoint here i'm going to change this to loiter turns so loiter is the sort of action of circling um, and let's give it a number of turns so i think normally five turns we can um complete an airspeed calibration at which point we can go in and actually turn off airspeed auto cal while it's in the air and it'll save out our parameter and then we'll continue to fly it manually so after these turns i envision we do some manual flying possibly drop it into a fixed wing auto tune um, and then what we need is for safety we need this landing pattern so we'll pick a bit of the field where we can just sort of come across um, when we do get in the field we would sort of verify that the, the wind hasn't changed direction but let's imagine we're going to come in from the north um, and sort of land so sort of in this southerly direction here so we've completed these circles let's get it on a sort of landing circuit i'm going to sort of send it this way on a nice approach towards us and if we're at 60 meters there we'll do a sort of final waypoint at about 30 meters so i can taper off the height here so we're at 30 meters let's get this one at 40 maybe 50 and then um, let's do a land point there and let's just stretch this out to get a nice sort of angle so i'll try and get that to be nice gradient there okay and this would carry out the mission and land but as we talked about in our previous video what happens if there is a um, fail safe event so by default if you were in a mission it would continue and complete that mission but what we said here is that we're going to break out and do some manual flight so we we should add this marker this do land start marker so let's have a look i want to add that after the lighter turns i want to add below and then i'm going to change this here to do land start so do land start there it is and it's after the lighter turns so if we were flying around um, in manual mode or in fly by wire 
and we had a fail safe event such as loss of signal it's going to look to this mission line and it's going to carry out what's below that so it would go to um, in this case waypoint 7 it would go there to 8 9 and then it would do a landing so i'm just going to do a little bit of checking on these line them up a bit straighter so we're going to have a nice approach there and at this stage because we haven't actually um flown this plane before we're making quite a lot of guesses as to how it sort of sinks what distances we might need what angle we can approach at so this is um a very sort of early stage of doing this which can have lots of optimization but this here i'm happy is sufficient for this test flight today um, we can abort an automated landing in a few different ways you can flick into a different mode and um, you can also use throttle to abort so there is a parameter for landing abort which is to raise the throttle up and it will um, pull out of that automated landing so let's just summarize the mission we've created here we have a takeoff waypoint so we are going to shake the plane to throw it and um, the motors will arm and we will throw it in the direction of the wind it's going to climb to 50 meters at a pitch of about 15 degrees once it hits 50 meters it's going to fly directly to the next waypoint so in this case we've got waypoint two um, and we're choosing our sort of flight height for this aircraft at 60 meters being a smaller aircraft then it's going to cycle through the waypoints we've got three four waypoint five is something called loiter turns and we've told it to do five turns um, now bear in mind depending on the sort of angle it starts at and the angle it ends at that might actually be five and a half or it might look more like six depending on it starts counting um, but that is the purpose of those like the turns is to calibrate our airspeed sensor we'll then um, turn off airspeed auto calibration in the air and we'll be constantly comparing our air and ground speed and also the estimated wind speed to see if it looks correct and then we'll interrupt the mission and do some manual flying maybe a bit of tuning and then we'll let it perform an autonomous landing and see how it looks um, and we can abort that if it doesn't look too good We'll check we're getting information from our rangefinder and that's been used and that will be the process of this sort of maiden flight and also um, the first first steps of um, improving this autonomous landing. So off to the field. So at the field, Ben set up the shake to wake launch. I'll put a link down to how you set that up below and we just chucked it. He's using the here link as we've discussed in previous videos and that's sharing all the telemetry and the video onto his laptop. The initial playing around was very much around setting up things like the flight characteristics, doing an auto tune, and then also doing things like calibrating the airspeed sensor. I've edited that bit down. We've covered that again in other videos. Let's just focus on the landing. The landings, again, are an iterative thing that you set up. So once you get a good, better understanding of the plane, you can do that stuff. So let's actually go through a demo of the landing in action. In the top left-hand corner, that is the hood. That is the video that's coming down from the Hailing system captured in the computer. So here it is doing its approach. This is the final part of the landing and it's coming in a little bit high, a little bit fast, and it's going to overshoot very slightly and then slide on the ground. Um, horses weren't particularly impressed by that. So we'll make sure that we're a little bit further back again reducing the glide slope, reducing the speed because it has a very gentle glide slope and carries speed very well. Then we went and tweaked to those things in Mission Planner, moving the pieces around and setting it up slightly differently. Again, this was another attempt and we had a very simple mission this time where it would only go around three or four points and it's important that you don't just do the approach and the landing position because if you then have a go around you want it to kind of recover and to be able to set itself up for a nice approach so this was the second approach where we had dropped the landing height significantly to try and make it a little bit easier. However, it is going to come in over the hedge and the LIDAR is going to read the hedge as the ground. So that means the flare portion is going to happen much earlier. And as you can see, as it comes over the hedge, it's actually going to read the hedge as the ground. It's going to flare way too early and it's going to skid into the ground far ahead of the landing point. 
And this is part of the fun with this. It is a slightly iterative process. You have to understand how the model flies, how it sinks, what kind of speeds it needs for the approach in order to fine tune it. And be aware that if you're flying over things like obstacles or trees or even hedges or fences, that LiDAR can read that as the ground and initiate the final flare part of the landing process a little bit too early. So be super careful of that. I'd recommend finding somewhere that's very open, that's very flat, in order for you to fine tune how your model works. Again, a couple of key things with this, with all the auto landing stuff, is do not try any of this until the rest of the model works brilliantly. And make sure you know things like the stall speeds, the cruise speeds, the sink rate, things like that of the model will help you set it up. And I wouldn't try this unless you have it tuned well. Although you can do this without an airspeed sensor and without a LiDAR, uh, Ben recommends having both. Having a LiDAR means that you have that ability to do the flare portion where it just pulls the nose up and makes the landing a lot more graceful. So hopefully that's been interesting. I feel a lot more comfortable now having gone through that with Ben in order to set up auto landing on my planes. And whenever I've got a mission and I'm in a wide enough space, I will be setting up the do land start portion so that in the event of a fail safe or at the end of a mission, it'll come in and land safely. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payment 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.